Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about Diabetic Retinopathy. Diabetic Retinopathy is damage that occurs to retina due to diabetes mellitus. It is the leading cause of blindness in developed countries. It affects 25% of total diabetic population. Diabetes mellitus can lead to corneal abnormalities, glaucoma, iris neovascularization, cataracts, and neuropathies. Among the ocular complications of diabetes mellitus, diabetic retinopathy is the most common and most blinding. This picture shows normal vision. This picture shows vision of a person with diabetic retinopathy. This is the fundal picture of normal retina. These are the fundal pictures of a person with diabetic retinopathy. As you can see, there are hemorrhages, abnormal growth of blood vessels, aneurysms, cotton wool spots, and heart exudates. Now let us see about the presentation of a case of diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy can present in three stages. The first stage is non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy or NPDR. It can progress to proliferative diabetic retinopathy or PDR which can progress to maculopathy. Now let us see about the features of NPDR. It may be detected incidentally. The symptoms can range from mild blurring of vision to distortion to visual acuity loss. Other features include microaneurysms, dot or blot hemorrhages, flame shaped hemorrhages, retinal edema, heart exudates, cotton wool spots, venous loops or beadings, intraretinal microangiopathies. NPDR can be divided into mild, moderate and severe types. Now let us see about the features of proliferative diabetic retinopathy or PDR. It is divided into early and high risk PDR. If it is untreated, it can lead to total blindness. The symptoms can range from mild blurring of vision to severe vision loss. Features include neovascularization of disc or NVD, neovascularization elsewhere or NVE, free retinal and vitreous hemorrhage, fibrovascular tissue proliferation, traction or combined retinal detachments. Edema can also be caused by traction. Now let us see about maculopathy. It is the reason for vision loss in patients with diabetic retinopathy. It occurs due to functional damage and necrosis of retinal capillaries due to diabetic retinopathy. Now let us see about the differential diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy. The various differential diagnosis of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy include central retinal vein occlusion, branch retinal vein occlusion, ocular ischemic syndrome, hypertensive retinopathy, radiation retinopathy, and sickle cell disease. The various differential diagnosis of proliferative diabetic retinopathy include neovascularization due to vein occlusion, sickle cell retinopathy, drug abuse, sarcoidosis, and valsalva retinopathy. The various differential diagnosis of Maculopathy include cystoid macular edema or CME, central serous retinopathy or CSR, neuroretinitis, parafoveal telangiectasia, and macroaneurysm. Now, let us see about the investigations which need to be done for a case of diabetic retinopathy. Fasting glucose level and HPA1C levels should be measured for control of diabetes mellitus. HPA1C should ideally be between 6 to 7 percent. Fundus fluorescent angiography should be done to diagnose stage and for follow up of cases of diabetic retinopathy. B scan should be done for diagnosis and follow up of cases with vitreous hemorrhage. Now, let us see about the treatment of diabetic retinopathy. Laser photocoagulation is the mainstay of treatment for diabetic retinopathy. Focal and grid lasers are used for macular edema depending on number and localization of leaks. 
pan-retinal photocoagulation can be done for proliferative diabetic retinopathy when both lasers need to be combined grid laser is done 2 to 3 weeks prior to pan-retinal photocoagulation intravitreal triamcinolone acetonide and bevacizumab have been tried for treating macular edema in diabetic retinopathy intravitreal bovine hyaluronidase can be used for treating vitreous hemorrhages vitrectomy should be done for long standing vitreous hemorrhage traction or combined retinal detachment now let us see about the follow up of cases of diabetic retinopathy mild non proliferative diabetic retinopathy can be followed once in one year for moderate non proliferative diabetic retinopathy it should be once in 6 to 8 months for severe npdr it should be once in 3 to 4 months for clinically significant macular edema it should be once in 2 to 3 months for early proliferative diabetic retinopathy it should be once in 2 to 3 months and for eye risk pdr it should be once in 1 to 2 months if you have any suggestions please let me know in the comment section for more such videos please check out my playlists if you like my videos kindly subscribe your subscription will encourage me to make more videos thank you